Hi everybody, welcome in. It is seven o'clock. We're gonna go ahead and get started. We are so excited to be here and to play some music for you. I'm Ashley from, I'm, yeah. <laughs> and I'm Stephanie, I'm so excited apparently. <laughs> Um, and we have a awesome evening full of music for you. Um, we're going to play our pieces and in between, we're going to, oops, sorry about that. In between our pieces, we're going to be taking questions from the chat. And so if you have any questions like piano practice related, music theory related, anything, go ahead and type it in the chat. Even if we're playing, we'll um, read in between our pieces and that way we can answer your questions as well. Yeah, we're yes. super we're super excited to connect with you tonight and we're really excited to make some music and thank you for being here and I'm really stoked for this evening. Actually, yes, it's going to be a great time. So, I guess we should just get started. Yeah, thanks to Stephanie for being here also. Oh, and other th one other thing. Um make sure to just stay tuned for the whole time cuz we're going to announce we have something free for all of you that we're going to announce um at some point and then we also have a couple of other exciting announcements that we really want you all to hear. Um so just stick with us for those. All right. Okay, let's do it. All right, so I'm going to start us off with um, a piece called On a Quiet Lake, and it's a piece by the composer Florence Price. And Florence Price is one of my absolute favorite composers. I did not start playing her music myself until the past couple of years, and when I first, you know, discovered not discovered. I did not discover her. When I first um, was exposed to her music, I kind of went down this deep rabbit hole and just bought a ton of it and started playing all of it because it's beautiful and it's accessible. Um, and I think that Florence Price is a highly underrated composer. She, because of racism and sexism, didn't get nearly the attention that she deserved during her lifetime. And I think that just now she's starting to get like a fraction of the attention that she deserves. Um, so I'm really excited to play some pieces. I'm gonna play this piece on a quiet lake. And then later in the evening, I'm gonna play another piece by her that hasn't actually, I haven't been able to find it on YouTube yet. So it'll be kind of like the first time that it's on YouTube, which will be cool too. All right, here's on a quiet lake.
Thank you. That was so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I had never heard that piece before. I enjoyed that thoroughly. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank man. You. It's one of my favorite ones of hers. Uh, it's, Florence it's really Price nice. is incredible. Yeah. She is just such an amazing composer. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, well, we wanted to tell you a little bit. So, those of you that know me and have been to the channel before, um, welcome. I'm excited to have you here. And this is Stephanie. If you haven't met Stephanie before, she is my amazing friend and incredible colleague. We do a lot of work together. And uh, she's been on the channel before. We She did a, a video with me a while ago about body mapping, which is a really incredible um, way to kind of tune into your body and, mm -hmm. and what's going on when you're trying to you know produce sound at an instrument. And she's also done a couple of lives with me. And Stephanie and I met here in our, in our city, in our home city, um, a couple of years ago. And we really connected over this idea about perfection and that we didn't like perfection. <laughs> um, Stephanie and I were both classically trained musicians. And uh, do you want to kind of take it away and, and tell a little bit about what we connected on and Definitely. why we founded what we founded? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. And I'll just also say thanks so much for having me on your channel. Of and course. this is going to be such a fun night of music and conversation. And um, we're really excited to meet all of you. So if you haven't already thrown something in the chat about what you want us to talk about or whatever, um, please do so because we want you to be involved in this experience. So yeah, Ashley and I met in 2017 and we connected on a common theme for this need for authentic artistic expression, um, which, you know, maybe it sounds like that is how, you know, music is just meant to be, but um, the, the more you get into it and the higher of a level you get, like the higher the stakes feel and the more it feels like you have to be perfect in order to present anything to anybody ever. And we decided that creativity and perfection don't really live under the same roof. Really anything in perfection? <laughs> Not, yeah, anything human and yeah. perfection don't really like live under the same household. And we realize that in order for us to really express ourselves, we need to be honest about our process and embrace our imperfections as well as our successes. So we decided to start a concert series in 2017 and we called them the Connection Experiment Concert Series. And we called it the Connection Experiment because we decided that music is not about impressing, it's about expressing ourselves. And it's about connection with others and, and the music itself. And so we said, well, what if we just make our performances more like experiments? What if we make it more like we're trying something new and we're doing it in, this, in the moment with not only ourselves and the music, but with all of you and treating it like it's a fun experiment to connect with others and ourselves rather than this really elite performance that needs to be impressive to everyone we play and sing for. So we started that and we've just kind of been riffing off the theme ever since because yeah. it makes our lives so much more fun when we can just be who we are on and off the stage um, as well. So yeah. that's kind of connection experiment in yeah. a nutshell. Yeah. And it's transformed now. We do, you know, we perform and we play and we also have classes and a membership, and we're going to tell you more about that a little bit later. But one of the things that we're super excited about is that we have come up with a journal. And I've included in the description for this video a free PDF download um, for all of you so that you can download this journal. And the goal of this journal for all of our students and for all of the people that are taking our courses um, and kind of along with us for this journey is to help everybody be able to dig deep and really kind of go inside and uncover and kind of investigate what's going on in your mind with your emotions, you know, deep down when you are working on music, when you're performing music, when you're practicing music, all of that. And so we thought it would be fun uh, to kind of start out by reading you one of those questions and we're going to answer the question for you. And we'd love it if you could all kind of think about it and reflect on it yourselves. And as we play our next piece for you, uh, you can be thinking about your answer to this question as well. So let me grab it really quickly. Um, this question. <laughs> Um, this journal prompt is, what does mindfulness mean to you? Um, this is from our intro to piano course, uh, week two. Do you think mindfulness and music are related? How so, or how not? Is it possible to practice mindfulness during practice, sharing music and listening to music? So, um, I don't want to put you on the spot. I can start if you'd like. Do you want to start? Yeah, maybe we can share after we play our duet. Does that sound good? That's a great idea. And also, can we put it in the chat? I, maybe we can oh, put yeah. it in the chat so people could... Yes, of think course. Because so, we definitely want to hear your thoughts about yes. mindfulness and what that feels like. Okay. But I feel like personally, I'm going to forget what, what the journal prompt is and we're the ones that wrote it. <laughs> so having a visual would be great. But yeah, we're really excited about these journal prompts because we realize that music is so much more than 
the music itself. It's about going deeper into who you are and, and asking the important questions to uncover, you know, who you are. So yes. we're stoked about it. Yep. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and play some more music for yes. you. So this is a duet. It's uh, it's a Spanish dance. And Stephanie and I just came across these like a couple months ago. Yeah. And we were messing around with some of them. They're really fun. There's five of them in this set that we have. Um, it's Opus 12. And they're by Moskowski, um, a, a so Russian cool. composer. Yeah. So let's go ahead and go through this first one. All right. If anybody typed anything into the chat about mindfulness, tell us awesome being fully in the moment and deeply experiencing what is happening. So I feel like playing the piano without mindfulness is paradoxical. Yeah. Some people play automatically. So I feel like Talis is right. And that's kind of, it took me a long time um, to figure that out. And I had, I had a teacher in college who asked me to start doing some meditating. And at that point in my life, I had not been exposed to meditating. I had never tried it. And I don't think it was until 
much later after years and years of practicing and performing that I really fully comprehended and understood like how much mindfulness is a part of piano practice and is a part of performing. Um, one of the things I talk about a lot in my videos and with my students and that we talk a lot about is just like the idea of tuning out or kind of being detached from what you're doing. Uh, and anytime that we're detached when we're practicing, it's definitely not the best use of our practice time because anytime that we're detached, we're not as focused as we could be. And so more mistakes creep in, more inconsistencies creep in, and it can definitely be a recipe for um, for issues. And then I know with performing, I have to be fully mindful of what I'm doing. Like if I detach for a second, if I go down the road of like, what if I mess up or what if I hit a wrong note, then I completely spiral out of control and it leads to a lot of mistakes. Um, one of the things that I'm going to do a video on here soon that I I've been refreshing my memory on. I don't know if you've read this book. Have you read the inner game of music? Uh -uh. Okay. It's a book that I read in college that I'm rereading again, and I'm going to do a video on it eventually, but um, it's by a famous author who wrote the inner game of tennis. It was originally a tennis book. And then the, he partnered with like a professor, I think at Yale, and they made another one for music. And now they have been like the inner game of work, the inner game of basketball and all sorts of things. But one of the things that they talk about in the, in the book, they talk about so many good things. So I highly recommend the book. Um, and I can put the link in the description, but is this idea of like the I don't remember the terminology that they use for it, but there's essentially like two things that are happening in your mind. There's your full potential that you have. And then there's like this other person that is all of the constant scripts that we have running in our head. Ooh, and I think mindfulness can really help us to be aware of those scripts, but not allow ourselves to like get caught up in those scripts and like go down the rabbit hole with them. Cause for me, those scripts are not helpful. Those scripts are saying things like, do you know how to play the piano? Are you going to remember any of the notes? What if you forget? What if you make a mistake? And none of that is helpful. Yeah. <laughs> so if I can acknowledge that voice and be mindful of it, but not get caught up in what it's saying, it can really help me stick with the other part of myself, which is the part that has practiced and the part that like knows what I'm doing and has worked really hard. And I can like try to let that part shine. Yeah. So I guess that's what mindfulness means to me. What about you? Definitely. That's a big question. Um, I think mindfulness, it, it's a lot about what you said, right? I think mindfulness is just being aware and trying to be in the moment as much as possible and embrace reality and and go with the flow in the moment rather than trying to you know project what might happen whether it goes right or wrong it's just like I think mindfulness for me is like being in the moment present in the moment with myself and the music and whatever happens and I think too like um kind of piggybacking off what you were saying it's really easy for me to let my monkey mind take over. And I think mindfulness is being aware that your mind doesn't are, are always know what's true and what's not that, you know, don't believe everything you think is something I've heard many times. And I think it's really true. Mindfulness is that awareness that every thought you have doesn't have to be true, but you're the one in the driver's seat and you get to be the one who ultimately decides is, decides what's true for yourself. And that's just something that's like my constant journey right now is like, yeah, like those dueling parties, right? Like your true self, like what you're saying. And then like all these projections or maybe baggage from your past or whatever it is that kind of tells you that you aren't able to be and realize your fullest, most beautiful self. And um, so anyway, I, I don't sit here and say, I think I have it figured out. I obviously do not, but I think it's a question worth asking every day. Like, how can I be more mindful? How can I be more present? And how can I choose thoughts that are more in line with my true self rather than what, you know, this peripheral standard tells me I should be or what society has told me I should be or whatever, you know, has been thrown at me that doesn't actually belong to my true self. So I think mindfulness is just whatever, whatever you feel is true for you in the moment and being aware of you know, being aware of that. So well said. yeah, I don't know. I think it's a really important question. And I, again, I, I'm on the journey too. So clearly <laughs> I don't have it figured out yeah. either, but no, I think you make a really good point though about continuing to ask the question. I think that's yeah. really important. And like these journal prompts, if you download the journal are not meant to be like a one and done thing. These are things that we talk about all the time, like in every class, every week. And Stephanie and I just geek out on this stuff all the time too. Yes. Um, and have these conversations because they're so important. There's so much going on in the background mm -hmm. or like that we think is in the background, but it's really not. And it's important to address. So we want to hear from you too. Make sure you write your answers in the chat um, as you're listening to this next piece. Yeah. Played by Stephanie. Sounds great. All right. So kind of piggybacking off of that idea that we're supposed to be something that we're not or, you know, being mindful of what's true and what's not true. Um, I wrote a song a few years ago called The Standard, and um, I just felt 
like I wanted to embrace my authentic voice. Um, I, you know, started singing maybe five years ago. I'm classically trained as a pianist, but I realized that no matter what I was doing, I always felt like there was this mark I was missing somehow. And it's not just with music, it's with anything, right? Like if you're a woman, it's about like, you know, your physical size or your age or how much money you make, If you know, based off your gender, like, you know, there's more value for like you and who you are based off of these preconceived notions of what is acceptable in our society. And I just was really running up against that issue um, a lot then. And I continue to, but I realized that like, I don't want to be holding myself to an unrealistic standard that doesn't fit my authentic self. And I think I know that I'm far from alone. I've talked to tons of musicians um, or creative beings, which is everyone in the world, <laughs> basically. Um, and everybody has said at some point or another that there's been unrealistic expectations placed upon them that don't fall in line with their true authentic self. So I wrote this song called The Standard because I wanted to kind of write a semi self-indulgent song <laughs> that basically states like, you know, don't hold me to your standard. I'm not as fun when you flatten out my imperfections and you're not as cool when you fit in some highbrow boxed up way. Like we're so much cooler when we're actually just ourselves. So anyway, I hope that you enjoy the song called The Standard. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much. I love it. Thank I you. love it so much. Do we have more thoughts on it's... mindfulness in the chat? Uh, we had a couple of thoughts on mindfulness. Um, solely, <laughs> someone was saying um, just like being mindful and getting the polyrhythm right and sounding musical, which is such a great point. Um, all the what ifs creep into my mind. Yeah, some people were sharing. So I hope everybody like continues to think of that question and downloads the journal and goes through the other questions as well because they're really valuable. Agreed. They're yeah. worth they're worth digging around with. And yeah. I feel like. I've had so many students and I know you've had the same experience where it's like all of our students are saying the same thing. Like, oh, I just I would play for the recital, but I just I, I'm not perfect. So why would I bother? Or I don't want to get up there and humiliate myself. Why would I ever do something like that? I swear I've heard. How many times have you heard? Sound like, like <laughs> At least hundreds. And it's like, and it, of course, like Ashley and I, we have the same kind of conversations. Totally. Oh, my God. Like, I haven't practiced enough. How am I going to be able to show up and play this show tonight? I mean, you know, I mean, it's just that like yeah. freaking conversation that just holds us back. And that's the big part of why we wanted to start this journal was to say, like, music isn't just about learning the notes yeah. and showing people what you can do. It's about like, it's a whole other ball of wax that people don't really talk about very often. Totally. Yeah. And I think, so our motto, um, like with connection experiment is everyone is an artist. Um, and it's true. Like if you sit down at the piano and you play notes on the piano, you are an artist and it doesn't matter, you know, how good you are or what kind of repertoire you're playing or how you're performing or if you're performing or if you're just playing for yourself, none of that matters. All that matters is that we all have something to say. Um, and, and we can learn how to access that part of ourselves and we can learn how to do that at the piano if we have the right tools. Um, and with a little bit of, of time and energy and effort. So word. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I love that song. Yeah, it's oh, so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, next, I'm going to play a piece uh, by Rachmaninoff. Um, this is a piece that I learned a long time ago, actually, when I was in grad school. And uh, somewhat recently, in the last couple of months, my, um, my grandfather passed away. And I was lucky enough to be able to go to his funeral and to play this piece there. And um, my... My grandfather, I lived with him, my whole family. We lived with my grandparents when I was young um, from like for like five years. And so I actually started my piano journey of like taking piano lessons as a really small child while I was living at their house. And they had a piano um, and my grandparents were musical. They met in their high school musical. Um, they were both the leads in their high school musical and that's how they met. Uh, and so they were around when I was practicing and they were really supportive and they would come to my recitals and things like that. But one of my biggest memories that I have is my, um, my grandfather would come, I would practice before school. My mom uh, would have me practice before school. And um, he would come, you know, like in the little method books when there are words that go along with the songs, he would sing along with me while I practice and it would make me so nervous because he would sing and then if I would stop or if I would make a mistake he'd be like what are you doing you can't just stop I'm singing you have to keep going um and I had no idea that he was instilling so much wisdom in me at such a young age because you know those of you that have played along with with people when they sing or those of you that have, have tried to play in front of people or that maybe have a teacher that you've done a recital for that's kind of one of the big things that we try to learn as musicians is like just keep going just try to continue on um mainly for yourself because it's really hard to get back on track if you if you stop and start again and stuff like that. So anyway, a lot of my musical memories are tied up with my grandpa. And um, I was lucky enough when I was in grad school to live with my grandma and grandpa again when I was attending grad school. And this is a piece that I learned um, while I was in grad school. And they heard it a lot while I would practice it at their house on that same piano. And so I thought it was very fitting um, to play for my grandfather. And it made me, it was making me really sad for a while to play it. But I was realizing that there doesn't have to be a last time of me playing for this this for my grandpa. I can play it whenever and um, and for whoever. So I'm gonna play it all for you now. Um, this is Rachmaninoff's Moment Musical Number Five, um, Opus Sixteen.
Oh my gosh. That was so beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah. And I would, yeah, it's one of my favorites. yeah, I was like feeling emotional over here. Yes. Just like, Oh God, it's so gorgeous. Um, have we shared our journal yet with with folks? Have we put that in the chat? It's in the description of the video. Okay. I haven't okay. put it in the chat, but it's in the description. So if you just look at the description of the video, you can go ahead and download it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Perfect. It starts on that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Just yeah. making sure because I was like, oh, maybe we haven't posted it yet, but it is, yeah, it is underneath the, the video that we posted. Okay, great. Yeah. 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 Um, you're not, you're going to play. Yeah, okay. definitely. Cool. Definitely. Get out of your way and then we'll do that. Sure. Sounds good. So this is a little jazz arrangement that I am still in the process of creating, but it's called Stolen Moments. It's by Oliver Nelson. And um, yeah, I'm just, it, this honestly is just kind of a work in progress. So I hope that you enjoy being a part of my process. This is Stolen Moments. <clears throat> You have lots of lots of people excited about that. Oh, sweet! <laughs> I'm happy to hear it. Yeah, we had someone chat in. Um, that was wonderful, and it brings to mind what a teacher from many many years ago told me, which was to make the piano sing, and that's my idea of mindfulness. Mm, I like that. That's so good. Yeah, I think like tuning into your melody can definitely keep you in the moment. Yes. Um, counting out loud can keep you in the moment. A combination of both, for sure. Yeah. Um, do you have anything specifically that like helps you stay mindful while you're playing? <sighs> Oh man, that's a great <laughs> question. I've really just been trying to breathe more. <laughs> Breathing. Every time I get stressed or anxious, that's the first thing that goes for me. Yeah. 
And so what helps me kind of come back is just to like feel my breathing and, and do deep breaths. And I know it sounds cliche, but it's cliche for a reason. No, it's so important. I I have a student that may or may not be here right now. Um, who (laughs) we, he always jokes around that like we, or I always, I don't even know who makes the joke. One of us is always joking that we need, that I need to make like a 30 minute track of just like breathe, breathe (laughs) because it makes such a difference. If you could remember to be, I write it in my music. Like yeah. I will write it in different measures in my music if I know. Me too. I think that's very smart. Me too. Counting out loud for me like forces me, and I've always been like a num. Well, I'm I'm not a numbers person. I've always been a counting person, like with meditation as well. Uh, counting my breaths, counting the amount of time, that kind of stuff really helps me. And so counting out loud or counting really out loud in my head, like screaming at myself, um, helps, <laughs> helps me stay in the moment and not get you know distracted with some of those thoughts. Totally. Anyway, we're going to play another duet for you, um, another Spanish dance, and I'm excited to share it. I also, uh, we can answer any questions. You know, if you have questions about practicing, about performing, anything, um, go ahead and type them in the chat and we'll address them in between. Um, so before we play this duet, I did want to say uh, we have an exciting announcement, which is that um, if you liked uh, this journal prompt and if you're kind of into that message, we are actually going to start a connection experiment YouTube channel yes. um, and also a podcast. Woo! And we're super excited about it. We've started recording some of the content. And so within I would say probably like maybe within a, within a month at the most, it's going to be we'll have some stuff up. So I've linked to the connection experiment YouTube channel in the description if you want to check that out. I think we only have one video you on there right now. But if you want to go ahead and subscribe that way, you'll be, you know, up to date when we start releasing stuff within the next couple of weeks. Um, and then we also, we have a live class that's starting this Monday and it's not, <laughs> it's called Piano Pillars and it's for anyone with any amount of experience. We're basically, it's going to be kind of an open forum class where we do a lot of breakout rooms. The classes are held on Zoom and we workshop a lot of pieces. So you're going to get a chance to bring in like your own pieces that you pick that you want to learn. We'll work on them, you know, individually and also in front of the class and learn from each other in that way. And it's not too late to join. It meets for 10 weeks starting this Monday from 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific time. Um, And the link to that is in the description as well. And we're going to do a promo just for all of you that are listening, um, that are here with us tonight, that or anybody that's watching after the fact. If you want to take that class live and you also have a buddy or a friend that wants to take that live and you both sign up, um, you can each get 50% off. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and uh, email us and we can, we can get you set up with that. Yeah. It's always a great group of people and we just, it's just such an awesome community that we build. So Mm -hmm. uh, regardless of your level, you'd have a great opportunity to just meet other people who are doing the same thing as you and, um, and who are like-minded, right. Yeah. Um, In the way that music is about connection and diving deep and, and just, you know, self-acceptance, you know, we really, really like to bring that hugely into our yeah. <laughs> classes because without self-acceptance and, and self-compassion, it's really hard to learn something as difficult as this instrument. Yeah, so totally. it's just really, really cool. And so, um, yeah, if you can join us, we would love to have, love you. To have you. We also have a Facebook group that you can, it's a private Facebook group and it's only for people that are in Connection Experiment, but you get access to that. And there's a great group of people there that are always posting like encouraging things and great videos that they found. and we're really active in the group and um, you can post videos and stuff as well. So that's great. Just all good stuff. It is. It is. And we also play in that class sometimes. Yes. We, yes. If we're going to make you play, we also play. Yeah. <laughs> we walk the walk too. Yes. All right. So this is uh, Spanish dance number four. Same composer as before. That's Moskowski. Um, and let's go ahead and go through it. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
you. <laughs> I love that song. I do it's too. So it's fun. such a fun one. What does that make you think one. of? It's like very like I don't know. I love how dramatic it is. It's, I, I know. Love, I love how the um the first and the A sections like are so contrasting to the B section. Yeah. It's just fun to explore all of those like yeah. big ends of everything. So fun. So that's great. So fun. Um, okay, can we please repeat the name of the first duet? Um, yes. So it was a Moskowski Spanish dance. And the first one that we played was number two. And that one that we just played right there was number four. And this one that I have is a set of five. It's Opus 12, um, M-O-S-Z. K O W S K I. And I can put those in the description of the of the video as well. They're such a fun set. They're really cool. We'll have to play all of them at some point. Um, and then let's see, how much should the wrist bounce and what to do when you feel burnout? Um, ooh, good questions. So how much should the wrist bounce? I think that's a, a question that's largely dependent on um on what you're playing and what your goals are. Like if you're playing staccato or legato and what style you're playing and all of that. But I would say as a general rule, keep the wrist as loose as possible. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> that, that would be my advice. When we first learn how to play the piano, like we learn to keep our wrist parallel kind of to the ground like this. And we really want to make sure, um, you know, that we have that support and that we're not doing funky things and developing bad habits, like always having our wrist down or always having our wrist up. But I think oftentimes when people start out learning how to play the piano, they get stuck in this position. And then along the journey, they don't realize that there's like so much of a range of motion, not only in this part of your arm, but in your elbow and your shoulder and the forearm joints as Stephanie has taught me <laughs> with body mapping. Um, and so I think that just making sure that your wrist remains flexible. And that can mean, you know, like an up down motion. You probably saw a lot of bouncing when I was doing like, oops, I don't have it memorized, uh, but I was doing like staccato and I was trying to play really loud. And so I was using a lot of the weight of my arm there um, versus, you know, if you're playing like slow and legato and quiet, you're not going to see a ton of bounce, but you definitely still want to see that flexibility. So the amount of bounce you see, I guess, would be directly correlated to what you're doing, but make sure that you are loose and that you're not having points of tension anywhere in your body, but especially right here, um, you know, with this motion. <laughs> Do you want to add anything to that? Okay, cool. Great. Um, and you should go back and watch that body mapping video that Stephanie and I did. Um, Stephanie brought a lot of knowledge specifically about like how to, you know, just tune into the different arm joints and make sure that you don't have that tension. So I'll link that in the description as well. Um, cool. And what do you do when you feel burnout? Whoa. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. You want to come back over here for a minute? Sure. So burnout, I think can happen to anyone at any time. Yeah. I took a year off of music cause I was burnt out. Um, and I think for me, like when burnout happens, I just have to remember what my why is. Like, why am I doing it? Uh, try to filter out kind of similarly to the mindfulness thing, but like try to filter out all the extra stuff um, and come back to the things that I love. There's a ton of different like tricks that I play with myself. I mean, when I was in grad school, I would literally put M&Ms on the music rack <laughs> and like bribe myself to practice. And I'd be like, okay, after another hour, I get another M&M. After another 20 minutes, I get another M&M. I've done things like that. Like I have students that do like progress charts, rewards, all of that kind of stuff. But I think ultimately now at this point in my life, it's really like inspiring myself. So if I'm not feeling inspired to practice, I try to think of something that would make me feel inspired, whether that's like going back and playing an old piece or writing something at the piano or improvising for a while or like anything, watching a YouTube video of a performance that inspires me, like just something to get me back into my musical mind of like feeling music. And usually if I can get myself to a point where I can feel music, then I want to go and practice and I want to go and create. So I would say that's the biggest one for me is like, just get yourself to that point where you can feel music again, whether that's watching other people or doing something yourself. And that's usually pretty inspiring. What do you think? Yeah, th those are great ideas. I'm going to remember the M&M thing. <laughs> um, I, I think that you can never underestimate the power of stepping away and just getting yeah. outside. Um, for me, I obviously experience burnout. Not obviously, but I think as humans, you know, if you are at something for long enough, you're going to experience some burnout. And I think that space is good. So I, I think, you know, if I'm just feeling totally stifled, I'm going to reach a point of diminishing returns, which means I'm not going to make progress no matter how yeah. hard I try to fit the round square into a, that's, <laughs> that's not how the saying goes, but you know, the whole like square peg round hole saying it's like at a certain point, 
working harder doesn't actually pay off. And I think that there is a lot to be said for going and doing something that is inspiring. And I am always inspired when I'm outside. So if that means like, I'm just like sitting here and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have anything to say musically. Then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go outside and find something out there that has something interesting to say, like a tree blowing in the wind or two hummingbirds deciding to like dance around here, some flowers, or like the beautiful way that the sun shines through a window in this really like elegant and mysterious way. I mean, there's just, there's art all around us and it's not our job to be the sole creators of beauty. And I think just getting out and finding inspiration that is outside of our human selves can be uh, largely helpful. So that's, that's kind of what one. I like to do. It's just yeah. like, sometimes I just need to get the hell away from the piano, <laughs> but not because I hate piano or obviously yeah. I freaking love this instrument and it's taught me so much about myself and about life. But, but the harder you work sometimes, um, the more you realize that taking a break is just as important. So well. with the hard work, you know, and the practice logs and all that stuff, I think also to avoid true burnout, like give yourself a freaking break, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And be, be a human also so that exactly. you have that well to draw upon when you need inspiration. Yeah. I think that's really. And then the other thing too, that I was thinking of, I was talking to someone else about this today in a different capacity, but it absolutely applies here is the idea that like every day doesn't have to be related to other days. So like if you need to take a break one day because you're really hitting a wall and you're not feeling inspired, as long as you don't have like a jury or a recital, you know, the next day, like take a break. And that doesn't have to inform what you do the next day or the day after that. Like, it's not all a slippery slope. If you do take a break, if you do decide not to practice one day, if you do decide to do a shorter amount of time, that doesn't mean anything about you as a musician. That doesn't mean anything about what you're going to do the next day. Or I guess it doesn't have to like bleed into other areas, I guess is what I'm saying. So you can, you can take a break. That's a great, great advice. Just do it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you are me. Yes, you I'm gonna play. play I'm gonna play this last piece. Um, thank you. Yeah, it's another Florence Price piece. Another Florence Price piece, and it's called His Dream. Um, I love this piece. I I feel so connected to it, and I, I don't know. I was trying to think of what to say about this piece because I like to give a little bit of context and. I don't want to put words to what Price was trying to compose. And so I'm going to read to you actually just a little bit um, from this um, preface to this edition of this piece. Um, and I'll link this in the chat as well in case you're interested. It's a really cool piece. It's not super long. And I just find this to be really fascinating. So his dream is... Um, Let's see, like, so based on the handwriting and the paper type, um, it was probably composed in the late 1820s or the very early 19th, sorry, not 1820s, 1920s or the early 1930s. And Florence Price lived, I believe, from 1886-ish to like 1953 or 52. So like late 1800s to, to 1950s. Um, so this was composed maybe like 30 or 20 years before the end of her life, kind of right in her like 40s. And if, is the, if the date is correct, then it would place it around the time that the law practice of Price's first husband fell apart um, and his employment difficulties in their new home of Chicago made him increasingly moody and abusive, both verbally and physically towards Florence Price. And so they eventually separated and their divorce, you know, they got a divorce and all of that. But this piece, what I found so interesting is that it began as his dreams or thoughts. That was the original title. And then she added back home and then the end of a work day. And then she finally like scratched all of that out and just called it his dream. So I just wanted to leave you with that. So you can kind of think about maybe what you think it's about, how you connect with it. Um, it's beautiful.
Oh, I love yes. it. I love and something it. I should mention too is that I couldn't find a recording of that piece. So if it is recorded, if any of you can find that anywhere else, drop it in the chat because I would love to hear it. But when I was learning this piece, I always um, like consult recordings and listen to other people and find out what I like, what I don't like. Um, I couldn't copy anyone. <laughs> I couldn't find a recording of it. So this might be the first time that it's uh, that it's on YouTube. So you were all perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yeah, I it. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. I just, this is so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. I guess this is, we have one more. Just you. Yeah. yeah just one last more. One. Okay. Let's great. Well, let's see. If Do we have any questions. other comments in the chat? Let's see. Let's yes see. to mindfulness and nurturing creativity. Listening back, what yes. a brilliant variety, ladies. Oh, good. Awesome. Thanks, Motif Music Studios. Yes. Cool. Awesome. Well, if you have any questions, this is going to be our last piece. So yeah. make sure you type them in. Otherwise, we'll wrap it up with, with what you're going to play. Yeah, definitely. And we really would love for you to stay connected with us. So um, again, like if you can just find the information about the class we're going to teach on Monday, if you're interested, um, you know, we're also, if you want to just feel it out, you know, you just let us know and you can pop in and say hi and, and see what we're all about too. Yes. We're all about just connection um, with no obligation, obviously, but I just think now more than ever, we need community and we need to be surrounded by people who are supportive and like-minded. And, um, and so we're just really excited to riff off this message of Everyone's an artist and everyone's creative. It's just a matter of tapping into what you already have and believing that you have a musical voice that deserves to be heard. And that's true for every single person. So yeah, we just want to connect with you and that's it. So we hope that you, you keep in touch. And so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do one last song and it's called teach me how to be human. <laughs> and I don't know about all of you, but it's very hard it's hard to be a human and it's hard to know how to be um, a good one in this world. And I wrote this song because I just feel like there's this constant pull of like, either you know that you're right or you feel ashamed that you're wrong or you know that somebody else is wrong. It's like this like severe black and white situation and there's not a lot of room for humanness, which is gray, right? And um, I just see that a lot in myself of feeling like, oh, well, I'm a good person if I do good things or I'm a bad person if I have made a mistake or slipped up or, you know, whatever it might be. And it's just like super like myoptic. And um, I also wrote one of the lyrics. It was inspired by uh, a friend of my boyfriend's who passed away. And one of the things that he had texted another friend was um, uh, it was like he, he was struggling quite a bit. But one of the things he said was it feels like a Miss Americana and a heartbreak, heartbreak prince kind of morning, which to me is just like a super descriptive way of describing like all of the things that a human can be right like um like a heartbreak prince like you're just like dramatic and everybody loves you and you know but also you're probably like torn up inside and like you know a miss americana you know there's the whole spiel about like what that would what how complex that would be to be that embodiment of a person right and humans are really complex and so i thought that that line really stood out to me because um he was really struggling with his mental health. And I think that, you know, mental health is such a thing right now um, for a lot of people just struggling to embrace their humanity and all the parts of themselves. And so, yeah, I mean, the song really was just inspired by, you know, the struggle that it is to be human, but also the beauty that it is. And that if we could all just see that we're all so much more alike than we think, that maybe we, we wouldn't feel isolated and alone. And we wouldn't think that we're the only people that had ever felt the things that we feel if we just can open up and talk about them, right? Because shame only exists and grows in a Petri dish. So it only grows if we don't talk about it. And if we share our humanity with others, then all of a sudden we're not alone anymore. And so this song is called Teach Me How to Be Human. And uh, that is kind of the, the synopsis. Sorry to go off the rails a little bit, but I guess since you're here, you uh, care about music and connections. So you got to have a little insight. So lucky you. <laughs>
Okay, so uh, I love how Stephanie's voice changes when she sings. That's, someone wrote that in. Um, and beautiful. And then someone asked, who are your favorite musicians? Oh, uh, <laughs> do you know? Um, well, I mean, let's see. Who have I listened to lately? Um, sure. So one of my all-time favorite musicians is Brandi Carlisle. Dude. I love her. I yes. love her so much. Um, I love her voice. I love uh, her songwriting abilities. I think that she uh, is like a true poet. Um, oh, yes. And that's inspiring. I'm really inspired by people that I feel like have like the musical element and the lyric element. You also are amazing at that. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. <laughs> um, but just that ability to like write really deep lyrics and also really expressive music and then combine them in a way. And I think that Brandi Carlisle does that so well. Um, so she, I've, I've been listening to her a lot lately, actually. And then someone that I've been listening to, so I, you recommended a podcast called Lightning Bugs. Oh yeah, yeah. Ben Folds, who was like one of my, um, nostalgia, like a high school favorites and who we come back to occasionally. Um, and yeah, stay tuned because we do a dope <laughs> version of, oh my gosh, what is the song? Um, 
what is the song? We do one of his songs. That's really fun. Um, <laughs> I really built that up. And for us to not know, I know, the song, but we can't do it on YouTube anyway. Yeah. We'll, get, All right, we'll get in trouble. But at some point, if you're in one of our Zoom classes, we'll do it for you there. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a fun one. But anyway, I, I digress. So he has a podcast. Ben Folds has a podcast called Lightning Bugs. And he had a musician on there, I think named Dobie. And it was the first time that I had ever heard of her, but she's actually like a YouTube star when YouTube first started. Um, she was like a child when she started her YouTube channel, but now she's in her mid twenties, I think. And she has several albums and tours and stuff, but her voice is really unique and she sings like very, very quietly. Um, but I love her music. I think it's really different and really unique and interesting. So I've been listening to her a lot late, a lot late, lately. How about you? I, I'm like totally freezing, like during the headlights. Oh, I, I okay. have so many musicians that You're I love. Chick I love, I love <laughs> Chick Corea. Um, I love Herbie Hancock. I love Bob Dylan. I oh, love yeah. um, Janis Joplin's voice. I love her songs. I love Carol King. Yeah. Um, I love uh, just there's, I mean, mm -hmm. seriously. And then I love like, you know, ludicrous. I don't know. I mean, honestly, I, 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 I think anybody who sings with in, or plays with passion, <laughs> it's like good in my book. And so, I mean, I'm just constantly inspired by artists and I'm sorry that I'm totally blanking, but like, I really just love music. And yeah. if people, I love people who are committed to what they're doing, even yeah. if it's just freaking what, whatever version it yeah. is. So yeah, yeah. Totally. I realized we also took that in like the, the popish direction. We could have gone in a like composer direction, but yeah. I don't know if that's what, um, what someone was asking, but composers, I love Florence Price. Obviously that's yeah. why I played Florence Price. She's incredible. That's a whole nother, a whole nother topic, yeah. but we'll get back anyway, to we'll get back um, to thank you so much for being here. It was so much fun to play with all of you. Uh, we would love to see you in Connection Experiment courses. Get in touch with us if you have any questions. If you want to subscribe to that YouTube channel, it's down in the description. We're going to start releasing content very soon and we're super stoked about it. Um, thank you for spending your evening with us. We really, really value and appreciate your time and your energy and attention. And we look forward to seeing you next time. All right. Have a good night. Have a great night, everybody. Bye, everybody.